Now, welcome members, and thank you very much for joining us today. This is marking our second class for Swahili class, with an intention, of course, to learn how to speak, how to understand Kiswahili, how to read Kiswahili, and how to write Kiswahili with confidence. So yes, this is a, an initiative of Conscious in Study class, which is brought by the aspect and understanding the language is an important thing towards our struggle as a class for liberation, unification, and development of Africa. We therefore decided to have this, sec this section for us to learn about one unity language that can actually unify the continent. So Swahili being one of the proposed language for the unification, it's therefore my and our initiative and probably my volunteering services as a, as a member of Conscious in Study class and as also a teacher of, of course, Swahili to offer this viable and very important language to you all Africans wherever you are so that we can actually unite and speak together the same language. So today, I'm pleased to have you on board, and I uh, will be going around also to see and ask of probably what is your expectations. In the last class, we had Sister Agnes from South Sudan and Baba Leonard from Nigeria. We did a bit of, of course, a recap from where we started, and we went to the introduction to the vocals, vowels of Swahili. And therefore, I'll give some, maybe five to 10 minutes for an introduction to other members who are also new in this class, because this is the second time. Can you tell us who you are and tell us what's your expectation in regards to this, or how do you feel in regards to having this opportunity to study Swahili, and what are you looking forward to? So I'll start by Brother Renomi. Can you unmute yourself and tell us who you are, where you are from, and maybe what's your expectation in regards to this? Maybe what's your level of understanding in Swahili so far? Komura Renomi? Okay. Yeah. Good evening. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, my name is uh Abimbolu Rinu Miogumbangu. I'm a Yoruba man. I'm presently based in Nigeria. I'm also so I want to learn Swahili because I think it's a it will help my bonding with other fellow Africans, especially those who are who are already speaking Swahili and others that want to want, want to learn it. So for now, I don't have much idea about I don't have much idea about Swahili. I said uh, I think Ashante is, is Ashante is that thank you or welcome. Yes, that's thank you or welcome. Thank you. Okay, I can't say that's really what I that's really what I know of. I know from now. All right, so I will look forward to learning more. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Brother Renumi. I know language is also in the center center place of the research you're doing for CSG in regards to culture. So um, yes. culture. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Comrade uh, uh, Valerie. Valerie? Or Valerie? I don't know if it's Valerie or Valerie or Valerie. Comrade, are you able to unmute yourself? Tell us who you are, where you're joining us from, and maybe what's your expectation? Valerie? Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, I'm at the moment at Ethiopian Airways. Um, I'm waiting for my flight to go back to England, so I thought I would join you. Um, right, I'm ju I've just left Zanzibar. Um, we are hoping to um, purchase a property in Zanzibar and move there. So I would like to learn Swahili so that I can interact with um, everyone in the country. At the moment, um, when we so say try the transport, uh, we're not able to interact. And so say I don't want all the time to, people to be laughing when you try to say something. I need to be able to understand. 
so that um, that's the reason why I want to learn. And um, I've learned one or two words, but um, I need to go further. I need to an understanding uh, written and spoken um, Swahili. So that's me. Hello. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I remember your. Oh, uh, I remember senior comrade Glenroy is my is yes. senior. <laughs> okay. He told me that you may try your best to join. So I'm happy that you managed okay. to join. Right. I'm going to put it on mute because it's really busy at the airport. No problem. Yeah. No problem. But uh, okay. at least you'll get me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Comrade Linda. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Good evening. How are you? Yeah, I am okay. My name is Linda Masarira. I'm a Pan-Africanist at heart. I believe in feminist transformation of um, all women of um, African descent. And um, I really feel moved to learn Kiswahili so that I'll be able to communicate with other Africans across Africa who speak Swahili and for us to be maybe able to use Swahili as a medium language as we advance the unification of Africa agenda. Because somehow, somewhere we need to agree on a language to use that everyone can relate to. And I don't think that it will be a mammoth task for us to be able to adopt Swahili since it is the mother language of where almost all Bantu languages came from. Thank you. You're welcome, sister. Yes, indeed, the, uh, Thomas Ankara say that women hold the other half of the world and that there should know and there cannot be true liberation without the liberation and the emancipation of the women. I do truly appreciate whatever you're doing in that field. And we actually are together into this because we are one. Women played a critical role even during the independence of Africa, during the struggle for Africa. And I believe they still have a role to play, including language. You see, they say that when a child is born, they learn their mother tongue. So if the mothers can know Swahili, then the children that will be born in Africa in the next 20 years can all learn Swahili. And that will be the best way to make Africa have the Swahili generation. So it's upon responsibility of the mothers actually so much to learn this language so that the children that will be born in the next 10 years from Africa can be able to learn Swahili so that in the next 20 years or 30 years, then Africa shall have actually achieved this Swahili thing because the mothers will give them that basic language and that language will be the unification language for all of us. So I do appreciate your presence and your efforts, sister, and thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Now, I forgot to say I'm from Zimbabwe. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very important. Yeah, you're from Zimbabwe. Valare is from UK, but now moving to Zanzibar, and she's on her way back to UK, maybe in Ethiopia. Leonard is from Nigeria, and Renumi is also from Nigeria. Leonard, kindly unmute yourself and maybe get another opportunity to introduce yourself and maybe share more about you also. I know you were in the last class, but everybody here was not there apart from me and you. Thank you, comrades. Um, my name is Leonard Onyabuchi Ofoke. I'm a Nigerian, currently in Uganda. I was in class last week, but today I'm pleased to see all of us joining again in a great number. My expectation doesn't go beyond understanding what unites us, and this language is very important as a Pan-Africanist. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for all of you. Now, without wasting much time, as I've said, yes, I did Swahili as a teacher, but uh, after my graduation, I never liked going back to teach. So I've been in this front of pushing for the Pan-African journey and Pan-African issues. Like you see in my country, even Swahili is not a favorable subject because everybody knows Swahili. So even getting an opportunity to teach as a teacher of Swahili is very limited. The government cannot even announce or, or even put forth such vacancies for Swahili most of the time because they assume everybody knows it. And of course, everybody knows it without even going to class. So I, I walked out of teaching a bit and then I decided to do this Pan-African push. Then I've tried before to try to start up Swahili class. And then I stopped it in between. 
But now it was like, it came back again. And I said, okay, let me help whatever I have to give to the continent. It may be my little contribution towards this unification and liberation of Africa. And at least even if I leave this continent, I'll say that I give my little. I believe in the power of multiplication. So if all of us who are here can be able to learn this Swahili in the next three months or four months to be the masters of this Swahili, then we are sure that we will have another five new teachers who can then teach another five each. And in the next one year or two years, we are able to really replicate and have so many people. And I think this is the best way to start. As Sister Linda says, if she will be able to actually learn Swahili and master it, she might target women all over and women in Zimbabwe start out. Then these women can be able to learn Swahili because if you pass the language to women, we are sure that the women will pass to the younger generation. And this shall be our greater contribution. It is time in Africa that we need to move to action towards this process of liberation and unification. And this action includes us volunteering ourselves and our services for the unification of Africa. So I'll go straight to take you that uh, uh, in this class, I will be using a guide for this course, which is a, a written guide by two authors, which is Kalfan Mohamed Mazuroi and also Kimokoti, Agnes Christopher. So these are the two authors. Like a teacher, always you know, even any language you teach in any school, you don't write your book for teaching. You use the books written for teaching and after scrutinizing the most book that could be more applicable for beginners and that could actually fuse both languages for understanding, I landed as a teacher to this book. So this will be the book that will guide us in our learning of Swahili. And of course, I know some of you might be expecting that we ought to have started clearly by starting by teaching or using Kiswahili as a mode of language towards these classes. But no, it doesn't start like that. That's where sometimes you get it wrong. You must start from the language somebody understands to introduce them to the language they don't understand. Then over a period of time, they can be able to have a mastery of that new language. Then now you can use that new language as a mode of learning or a mode of teaching. That's how it goes. So if you start today by saying, oh, you see, it's new things that actually can confuse your mind. And I want us to assume that you are all kids. It's very hard for an adult to assume there are kids. But for this one, we want to assume like you're a kid. A kid who joins the school for the first time in a kindergarten does not know any language. And therefore, anything that is introduced must be introduced systematically so that you don't confuse the understanding and you don't bombard them. So we will assume in that process. So in this class, as we did before, uh, last time, we are going to have around 15 lessons. The first lesson will be about greetings, as it's written here, all to do with how are you, all greetings, saying goodbye, saying hello, and everything else. That will be our first lesson. But before this lesson, we'll be starting with the vowels and the consonant of Swahili, which are very important. In any kid and any introduction, in any language you master to the vowel and consonant of Swahili. Then from there, we'll be moving to things to do with the family. The father, the mother, how do you call them? Or how do you describe them? Then we'll be moving to the house, anything within the house. So you start first of all by greeting. And then you get to understand the languages involving your family members, the father, the mother. Then you get to understand things within the house, maybe the, anything that's available within the house. Then you will go to issues of oh, what time do you get up or what days or the, how do you call the days of the week. Then from there, we'll be moving to lesson five at school. We assume that these are kids going back to school. So at school, how do you call the teachers, everything else in the school, the studying, the subjects. Then we'll be going to the trips, which is, of course, how do you call anything in relation to the trips? Traveling, like now our sister is traveling. How will she say that I'm traveling to uh, back to England, that I'm either boarding or lighting on an on a aeroplane? So all those things will be also coming systematically. Then we'll be going to cautious words. How can I help you? Courtesy things, making appointments, using telephones. All those things will go to that in lesson seven. Then lesson eight will go about some clothing and how shoppings. Like you'll be going to buy for some food. How will you tell a friend, I'm going to the shop to buy some food? Or I need a dress, or I need a trouser. So all those things will be also coming in. Then we'll be going to things to do the food and restaurant. How do you say whatever you cook rice, or you're maybe boiling rice, or maybe you're saying you're taking tea. All those things also will be coming in lesson nine. Then in lesson 10, we'll be discussing things to hospital in case you're sick. How do you call a doctor? How do you say you're healthy? How do you describe or call some parts of your body? 
The lesson never will be at, of course, the internet cafe, because now internet is a body of everything else. How do somebody say, I'm on an internet, I'm browsing this, can you browse for me this, or I need a computer or a laptop? How do you call all these things? Then you'll be going to the banking sector. How do you say, how much money do you need? How do you count the money? And how do you say, I want to go to the bank to deposit money? Then you'll be going to occupations again. How do you describe different profession like a teacher? Eh? I'm a teacher. How do you call that in Kiswahili? How do you say that in Kiswahili? So that also will be the part of the lesson 13. The lesson 14 will be in free time. The hobbies, the entertainment, the leisure times, anything related to those areas. Then lastly, we'll be ending with sports and outdoors activities. So we believe by having and capturing or actually going through all these, we'll be able to actually have a master of this Swahili class and all Swahili. So this is 15 lessons, uh, excluding the first lesson on vowels and consonants that we hope we'll finish today. So it will be 16 lessons, which are almost equivalent to 15 weeks or 16 weeks. That should be almost uh, three months, three to four months. So we hope we'll move in, in slow pace and we believe that we'll capture what is necessary. Is there anybody having a reaction in regards to this, actually the lesson plan? If there's anything you need to comment or anything you think that is missing here that you might want us to include. Are you going to give us this module maybe on email? Yes, I can be able, but I don't want to send the whole package. I'll, I'll probably be sending either the only lesson of the day. Once we've done the, some lesson for today, I can be able only to send those pages of the day for you to do a review. Because if I send the whole content to you, you might be in a hurry to master all, and that might actually limit your understanding or might interfere with your understanding. So maybe after a lesson like this, I can be able to share the slides or the pages that we, are, we have captured for our today class so that your learning be progressive enough. All right, thank you. Noted. Fair enough. Okay. Any other concern? Okay. Then we we will start clearly. So how we in, intend to run this class? This class we intend to have it for for one hour, forty five to one hour. With an intention to have the first five to ten minutes of a startup of the class, recap of the class. Then the next thirty minutes to thirty five minutes to be active uh, presentation or teaching. Then the last fifteen minutes or ten minutes will be for questions and answer, or maybe an assignment or takeaway note or takeaway assignment. That's how we anticipate to run to this class. So we always want to keep it short and brief, an hour or 45 to one hour, so that you don't also bulk your understanding, bulk you with so many things. We want to, to grow progressively. So if there's no any concern in regards to that, we'll go straight to what actually we started up with, which was on the on the lesson one on the on the spelling and punctuations, which is the first part. So stretch to what you want to do today, we'll be covering the vowels, and I'll try, if possible, we also cover the consonants. Then that will give us some good time. I know the consonant might be longer, but I'll try my best to see if you can capture the vowels and the consonant. Then once I send the slides, you can be able to be doing a follow-up practice over the week so that you can be able to master it. The next class, when you do a review, some of us here will start with us a review. So I'll ask maybe one one member of the class to do for us a review in regards to vowels. What did you say? In regards to consonant, like that, like that, so that we can build up as we move along. So if there's no any other objection to that, we'll go straight to this. Now, Swahili spellings and pronunciations are probably easier than you think. Of course, they are the same with English pronunciations. Because in English, English, we have the vowels from the a or A, A, E, O, U. Swahili also share the same five vowels. And in Swahili, I'll be able to learn to teach you how these vowels are pronounced. So don't take much consideration on the words or understanding what the word is all about, but you actually want to work on the pronunciations of those vowels. Now, as you see in my screen, if you can be able to follow, the vowels is the part of the letters. So the first letter is maybe, I'll ask somebody to read for us the letters from the first letter written there, if you can be able to see the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth letter. So let me start by uh, Renomi. Can you read for us the first letter in the, in the vowel side? Just pronounce it, the first letter.
Comrade Renomi? You know yeah, I'm trying to see. First letter, I think first letter is uh, A. A E I. A. -E -A. A. It's A. I wanted you only to pronounce the first letter. It's A. In A, Swahili, yeah. we call it. In Swahili, we call it A. Oh, okay. It's A. It's now A in Swahili. Now, comrade uh, Leonard, can you read for us the second letter? A. The second letter is. A. A. Now, in Swahili, we also call it A. A, the way it's in English, A. Then the third letter, Comrade Linda, can you be able to read for us the, the third letter? E. E, yes. In English, they call it I. But as we call it E. So in Kiswahili, it's E. Then Comrade Valerie, can you read for us the, the, the fourth letter? Oh, you said you're on mute. I don't know if you'll be able. I'll go back to, if you're able, let me know. So, Comrade Renumi, back to you. The, the fourth letter is? O. O. Yes, in Swahili, it's also the same as O. Then, uh, Comrade uh, Leonard, can you read for us the last letter? O. O. Yes, in Swahili, it's also O. So, it is A, O, O, O. Those are the voices of Swahili. A, A, E, O, U. Now, let's go to the appropriate approximate sounds. Now, in the letter A, which is in Swahili, is A. We pronounce it like we've pronounced the A in the word father. In the word father, it is fa, fa, not A. It is A. So we call it father. So we use the same word ah. Uh. Now in, in in Swahili we'll say ba ba ba. So the ah uh comes as ah, uh, not a eh. ba ba. Then in the second letter a uh, a, we read the a as in the word bed be be a. Eh. So we read it as a eh, in the word bed, and we'll say yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't 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 focus so much on the on the on the consonant, but just focus on the pronunciation of the voice. Yeah, yeah. Or pe te. Then the letter I is in Swahili is e, like in the word C. So it is e, not I. E. Then you call it ki t, ki t, or v t. So it's come out as e. Then the word o. We pronounce it as we do it in the word go. Oh, go. So in Swahili, we say mo, to, mo, to, or so, ko. Then the letter u, we pronounce it as we do in the combination of English two o's. The two o's in English bring the word u, like mood, mu, u, u, mood. So in Swahili, we say hu, huru, huru. Or the word nu su, nu su. So with that, I'll request. Uh, if I start by comrade Renomi, kindly read for us the first, uh, the first word in the examples in Swahili. In letter A, the first word is. Okay, you are having a problem. Come back. Let me go to Comrade uh, Leonard. Leonard, can you read for us the first one? The letter A. Letter A. Ba -ba. A. So it is? Kama. 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 Yes, Kama. That's perfect. Uh, uh, Sister Linda, can you read the first word before the word karma? The other first word in Swahili. The word together with karma, the first word. Baba. Yes, Baba. Baba. So, R still means R. Baba. Then let's go to the second letter. 
A. Now, comrade, let me go to Valerie. You said she cannot connect with us, but I hope she's following. Let's go to Renumi. Are you able to read for us the first word in the letter A in Swahili? Baba. Kama. Read the, Baba. the second one in the letter A. We are in letter A. The second one, Kama. Yes. Now, in letter A, not letter A. We have moved from letter A. We are okay. going to letter A. So, uh, wait a Pete, 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 Pete. Yes, now you call it Pete. The first one I know we might have a problem is called Ye, 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 Ye. So Pete, Ye, Ye. Let's go to letter I. Now, Comrade Leonard, can you read for us the first letter in letter I? The first word in letter I. Kiti, Viti, Kiti. Now, Kiti. Of course, as we'll be learning later, kitty is in singular. In plural, they call it vt. So it's the same, kitty, vt. So vt is the plural of the single letter kitty, but that one will learn later. So just, just pro concentrate on the pronunciation. Sister Linda, can you read for us the letters in the words in letter O? Moto, soko. Yes, but now you don't go very fast as you put it. Moto, so ko. You now slow it in Swahili, you slow it a bit. You say moto, moto, not moto. Okay. So the first word moto. becomes slow. Moto. Moto. Yes, so moto. So ko. Yes, perfect. So you, in, 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 you know, in the word you are reading before, you are starting highly. But in Swahili, the first word comes from low intonation. So you say moto. Soko, not the other way of moto, soko. So you say moto, soko. Can you try again, Sister Linda? Moto, yes. soko. Yes. Perfect. That's very good. I'll give you the meaning later. Moto means fire. Soko means shop or market. So that one you'll be learning later as we move along. Then letter O. Let me go to back to comrade uh, Renumi. Are you able to read for us letter O, the first word? Or the second word? Letter O. Moto. No, we are in letter O. Okay. Huru. 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 Yes, Huru. And the other one? Then, Nusu. Yes, no su. Huru. No su huru means, means what? So, huru means free. You'll be learning later. I know some of us have been learning the word uhuru. Okay. You've been learning the word uhuru. Uhuru movement, uhuru, and uhuru is a, is a word across the continent. So, uhuru comes from the word freedom, means freedom. So, huru is free or freedom. Then, no su, which means half of something. Half of something you call no su. So we'll be able to learn this as also we move along. So thank you very much for trying to read the vowels. We'll be moving forward. So they say again, be careful not to reduce the vowels as in English. So early words are almost always stressed on the second to last syllable. But even in unstressed syllables, vowels retain their full pronunciation. Double vowels are pronounced separately as two distinct oh, yeah. syllables. So if a word ends with two vowels, the stress will fall on the first vowel. So let's see where the two vowels follow each other. And we'll be going back and okay. starting from the word. We'll be starting with the word. Uh, welcome, comrade Simon Chibi from, I believe he's from Zimbabwe or Zambia. But welcome on board. We are moving on with our class. So as we have learned the first vowels, this is where the vowels are singular. But there's a second situation where the vowels can be following to each other. There can be two vowels. Like you see in English, we have the word, an example we have been given here, the word mood. Mood is having two O's together, double O. So we call it mood. Then in Kiswahili, there can also be a double of the vowels. For example, the first word we have 
ma ka ma ka if you can see my screen so we say ma ka ma ka because the first letter a is a so we call it ma ka the second word will be wa ze wa ze so this is a z which in Swahili is called ze ze so we say wa ze then the letter i if the high follow each other we'll still repeat it he he so the the h is he so we'll say he probably in our pronunciation we might even ignore the word h we just pronounce the letter double letter i so we call it he then the last word in o would be ko 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 then there's ku ku then there's na fu na fu then there's also the word ku uliza ku uliza ku uliza so the word maka means charcoal maka then wa ze means elders wa ze then he means this pointing to something this we say he then ko means of course the god ko then ku means big or great ku then na fu means relief we say na fu like i'm feeling more relieved na fu then you have the word ku uliza ku uliza so the stress in the, in the first vowel ku uliza ku uliza means asking or to ask maybe you are asking directions you say ku uliza ku uliza so those is that's how we stress when the vowels follow each other like when you have a double vowels so we put the stress in the first one so like ma ka ma ka ma ka wa ze wa ze he ko ku na fu ku uliza now let me go to start by comrade renumi can you read for us the first word as i've read them the first word with the double a or double a Uh, uh, that's Baba. No, we are done already. We have, we have moved down to the words in the double A when the vowels are double. When you have double o vowels, we have the word down there in black. If you can able to see them. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, let me go to next comrade as you catch up. Let's go to comrade Leonard. Okay, Leonard, my car. Wazi. Yes, maka. Maka. The second one? Comrade Leonard, can you read for us the second word? Wazi. Yes, not wazi. He was trying to say Z. When we say A is pronounced as A, not Z. So it becomes A. So it is wazi, as you've said rightly. Wazi. Then let's go to comrade uh, 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 Sister Linda. Can you read for us the third word? He. 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 Not E. E. It is word as he. So there are two he. of course. Yes, he. So the stress become from you put the higher intonation as you move down. You stress on the first word as you move down to the second one. So you say he, he, he. yes, he. he. To means this one or this. It is he. Okay. Yes, the uh, comrade. Uh, I'll go back to comrade uh, Renomi. Can you read for us the word, the th the, the the third word? That's cool. We did. We say. 
Say what? Ko. Is not ko. Ko, yes. Okay, so it will ko. be ko. Ko. Yes, ko. Can you repeat again? Ko. Yes, it is ko. Then, Comrade Leonard, can you read for us the, 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 the following one? Ku. Ku. Repeat again. Ku. Yes, ku, ku, ku. Okay. Comrade Linda, can you read the, the, the second last word? Na fu. Yes, that's you got it perfectly. Na fu. Na fu. Then uh, comrade Rinumi, can you read for us the last one? Kul Kuliza. Yes, ku uliza. Ku uliza. So you start with the ku being I and then you move down. Ku uliza. Try again. Kuliza. Kuliza. Yes, kuliza. Yes, ku that means to ask. Kuliza. So I think we are moving on well. We've been able to tackle one when the voice is alone. How do you pronounce it? Second is when the do the vowels are double in a sentence and either they follow each other. How do you pronounce it? Now the third part will be where the vowels follow each other, but they're not the same vowels. So maybe where there's A and A together, how would you say that? Or where A and E follow each other, how do you pronounce that? Or where O and U follow each other, how would you say that? Now, in combination of two or three different vowels, each vowel is pronounced separately as its own syllable. Separately as its own syllable. Now, let's see this. Where in the first word, the two vowels end with different vowels. We say, ku tia, ku tia, ku tia, ku tia. And the second one will be, abiria, abiria. We say, abiria, abiria. If you move faster, you say, abiria, kutia, abiria. And the third word will be, chai, chai. Chai. Then the fourth word will be kuenda. Ku enda. Kuenda. Ku enda. Then the last word, the other word will be zamba rau. Zamba rau. Zamba rau. Then the other one will be ku o ndoa. Ku o ndoa. So ku o ndoa. Ku, o, ndo, a. Then the other word will be e, u, si. E, u, si. E, u, si. Then the other word will be pali, li, ya. Pali, li, ya. Pali, li, ya. Then the other word will be ma, ende, leo. Ma, Ende leo. Ma ende leo. And the word will be ku zo e ha. Ku zo e a. Ku zo e a. Then the last word will be ku zu i a. Ku zu i a. So the word kutia. I will repeat them again. Kutia. Kutia is means to put something in something, like to put some water on a bucket. You say kutia. Then abiria, abiria means a passenger. Abiria, a passenger. Chai means tea. Chai, it means tea. Kuenda, it means to go. Kuenda means to go. To go. Then zambarao is a fruit. There's a fruit called zambarao. It's like a lakot. We call it like a, we call it the nuts. There's these nuts. There's the, the, these nuts we use, the small nuts. And then kuondoa, kuondoa means to remove. Kuondoa, remove. Eusi 
Eusi means black. So we have we'll learn we'll learn other words in relation to Eusi as we'll be moving to consonant. Eusi means black. Palilia is means to plow. Palilia. Maendeleo means development. Maendeleo, development. Kuzoea means to be used to. Kuzoea, to be used to. Then kuzuia means to block or to protect or to prevent. Kuzuia, to prevent something. So let's go again as we pick this word. The first word I've said is kutia. Kutia, which is kutia, kutia. Abiria, you say abiria, abiria, which is abiria. Then chai, chai, which means chai, chai. Kuenda, you say kuenda, kuenda, kuenda. Zambarau, you say zambarau, zambarau, you say zamba. Rao. If you want to learn how to pronounce them separately, you say Zambarao. But if you have to master that, you say Zambarao. Zambarao. Then you have Kuondoa. 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 We have Eusi. Eusi. Then we have Palilia. 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 Then you have Maendeleo. Maendeleo. Then you have Kuzoea. Kuzoea, and the last word is Kuzuia. Now let's start with you, Comrade Renumi. Read for us the first word. Kuti, Kutia. Yes, Kutia, you got it right. Kutia. Perfect. Kutia. Comrade Leonard? The second word? Abiria. 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 Can you repeat again? Abiria. Yes, Abiria. Then uh, Comrade uh, Linda? Chai. Chai. Perfect. Chai. Then back to you, Comrade Numi. Ku Kuenda. Kuenda. Perfect. Kuenda. Then, Comrade uh, Leonard? Zambarau. Perfect. You've brought it perfectly. Zambarau. Easy like that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, Comrade uh, Linda? Sorry for that. Kuondoa. It should not be Kuondoa. It's like I've moved very fast. Let me refresh my page. It should be... My, my page jumped very fast. Sorry for that. Let me try to retrieve where we are supposed to be. It will take me a lot of time. The two people are catching up very fast. Uh, I believe you are, you are finding it easier to, to follow up. Um, it says Swahili is more like Shona, so the words aren't that difficult because some of the words actually have the same meaning with our Shona here in Zimbabwe. Oh, perfect. Yes, Swahili is purely more of Bantu. So the Bantu people, if you are any related to the Bantu, Bantu people find it very easy to speak Swahili or learn Swahili very fast. Let me move very fast. Sorry for that. I don't know what happened. Comrade Renumi. Comrade Renumi. Comrade Renumi. I think you're having very serious problems in terms of your network. Can you network? Let me do this. Let me stop sharing. Then I share again. Instead of moving very fast. I'm trying to... 
chat. That will be very easy for me to reach out to the page. Yes, this will be very fast. Yes, sister, sister, yeah, sister Linda, you are right. You said kuondoa. Was that what you said? Kuondoa. Perfect. That is it. So let's get back to Comrade Rinomi. The following word is? Rinomi? Yes, I'm here. Can you read the following word after the word kuondoa? Oh, sorry. Eusi. Yes, Eusi. Perfectly. Just like that. Eusi. You, you almost said Eusi. <laughs> You're trying yeah, to still go. Eusi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to change. Eusi. Thank you. Yes. Leonard, yes. the following one. Palelia. Perfect. Palelia. Palelia. Perfect. Sister Linda, the last one. The other word there. Ma and the Leo. My and the Leo. Leo. My and the Leo. Perfect. Which is development. As a leader, I know you know the, you like development. <laughs> then Comrade Numi. The other second last word. Kuzu Kuzuea. Kuzo? Kuzoea. Yes, Kuzoea. Kuzoea. Then the last word, Comrade Leonard. Kuzia. Ku? Kuzia. No, no, you are leaving the, the, there's a vowel there, O, you are leaving as you end it. Can you include that last U in the vowels? So repeat again, Ku? Kuzuia. That is it now, Kuzuia. Now you are leaving U, you are saying Kuzia. You are leaving that vowel too, which is very important. So you say kuzuia. So comrades, that mark the end of our vowels for today. I will not like us to move to the consonant because that will bring another confusion. So maybe as a quick recap to our vowels, then we'll be ending our class with some other questions. So let's start from the the first words where we started from the the letter a r a e o u. So Comrade Leonard, you have something. You raise your hand. Can you go ahead? Yes, uh, my network wasn't good. I want to know the meaning of the vowel sounds that we have written. Uh, maka. And, maka. Uh, to the last word. Kuliza. What is the meaning of those words? Maka means charcoal. Charcoal, maka. Okay. You know the charcoal? Yes. Yeah, that's maka. Then the word kuliza means to ask. You have ask. jumped the words. I want no, all I'd of them. I, I'd said them before. Maybe you're not getting me right. So the word maka means charcoal. The word waze means elders. Waze, elders. Then the word he, he, means this, you are pointing to something, this, he. Then the word ko is a gut, along your gut, ko, ko. Then the word ku means either big or great one, ku. Like we say, mungu, mungu, the greater God, ku. So ku means great. Then nafu means relief. You are somehow relieved. Maybe if you are sick, you are saying, I've got some relief. You say, me pata nafu, nafu. So nafu means some relief. Then kuuliza means to ask. Kuuliza, to ask. Is that perfect for you? Yes. Then the remaining combination of two or three different vowels. Yeah, the words you've just been reading now, I've also said them. The word kutia is means to put something in some, like to put water in something, to tia, kutia. Here, 
Also, it can mean to put your signature on a paper. Kutia sahihi. So the signature we call sahihi. In sale of signature, we call it sahihi. So you say kutia sahihi. It means to put your signature. So kutia means to put something somewhere or even to put something on somewhere. You say kutia. Not actually to put aside, but kutia means adding something on somewhere or trying to put even your signature on a paper. You say kutia. Kutia sahihi. So kutia. Then abiria means a passenger. Abiria. Somebody is a passenger in a vehicle is called abiria. Then chai, I've say it means tea. The tea you take in the morning, we call it chai. So tea is chai. This chai might mean either already served tea or the tea in the farms. Like in Kenya, we have tea farms. So even the tea in the farm is still called chai. Then the word kuenda means to go. Kuenda. Kuenda means ku, to go. And the word zambarao is like the nuts. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a the, this, this nuts, the, these nuts that are being used for the factory, they are hard nuts to crack. The nuts that you sometimes you get, then you crack them with some stones to open them. And then we have the word kuondoa, which means to remove. Kuondoa, to remove. Then eusi means black. Eusi, black. Anything black, you call it eusi. Then palilia means to, of course, to, 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 to either plow or after plowing to to weed. To weed. Probably the word, that word will be to weed in English. Palilia. Then mendeleo means development. Then kuzoea means to be used to. Kuzoea, to be used to something. You are used to it. Umezoea. We will say umezoea to, from the word kuzoea. Then ku, kuzuia means to prevent or to protect. Kuzuia. Prevent or protect. So those are the words and the meaning of those words. Is that also perfect with you? Yes, thank you. Yeah, so you're welcome. Today we are only concerned with the pronunciation, probably not on the meaning, but I thought it's very important even as you do the pronunciation, you also understand the meaning of those words you're pronouncing so that it can help you build up slowly. So it will be very easy for us when you reach the other part of now, the meaning of the words. At least you have been used to the pronunciation and you've been used to the words meaning. So as I've said, the word Baba, which you started with, means father. You, the father in your father. The father is called Baba. Then the word Kama, it means if it is like. The word Kama can, you, can, be, can mean like. In English, we use the interjection, the word like. Like this. Kama he. So the word Kama means like. And then the word Ye, ye means him, you are referring to that person. You say him, yeah, yeah, yeah. him. Then the word pete, pete means a ring, the wedding ring. We call it, it pete. Then the word kitty means a seat, a seat, kitty. If they are in plural or there are many, you call it viti. So viti is the plural of the word kitty. Then the word moto means fire, moto, fire. Then the word soko means market. Market is called soko. Then the word huru means freedom or free. That's why I've told you, you've been used, you've heard the word uhuru, uhuru movement, uhuru. Uhuru means freedom. So huru is freedom. Then the word nusu, nusu means a half. A half of something, we call it nusu, a half. Is that also okay? Yes. So as we wrap up, I'll request each one of us to start with the Comrade Numi. You read for us all the words from the word Baba, Kama, Yeye, Pete, like that, until the last one. Then I'll go to Comrade Leonard. Then we end up with Comrade Linda. So Comrade Numi, let's start with the first word Baba as you go down like that. Uh, Bab. <clears throat> Bab is it Baba, as you just said. Yes. Baba. Then to say kama. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, the second yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Bete. Yes. Kitty. Yes. Viti. Yes. Moto. Uh -huh. Soko. Perfect. Uru. Yes. 
Nusu. Perfect. Let's go to the double double vowels down here. With the first word, Maka. Repeat. Maka. Maka. Yes. Was was it? Yes. Kitty. No. He okay. He. Yes. He. Perfect. He. Ko. Yes. Ku. Yes. Nafu. Perfect. Kuliza. Perfect. Let's go to the last part. Kutia. Yes. Abiria. Perfect. Chai. Yes. Kuenda. Perfect. Zambarau. Correct. Ku Kuondo. Kondoa. Yes, Kondoa. Yes. Eusi. Perfect. Palilia. Correct. Mandaliho. Mandaleo. Mandaleo. Yes. Kuzo, kuzoea. Yes. Kuzuia. Perfect. You deserve some good clap. You've done your best. <laughs> That's a perfect score. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really happy for that. Let's go to Comrade Leonard. Leonard? Leonard? Yes. Sorry for the interruption. Someone called on the phone. I was projecting with my internet. So we request that you read for us the words. Starting for the okay. word Baba. Okay. Baba. Kama. Yeye. Pete. Kiti. Viti. Moto. Soko. Huru. Nusu. Maka. Waze. He. Ko. Ku na fu kuliza kutia abiria chai kuenda zambarau kuondoa eusi palelia maendeleo kuzo kuzoea kuzuia Another good clap. You deserve it. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you for that. Let's now end with Sister Linda. Ba, ba, ka, ma. Ye, ye. Pe, te. Ki, ti. V, ti. V, ti. Yes. Yes. V, ti. Yes. Moto. Yes. Soko. Perfect. Huru. Nusu. Maka. Yes. Waze. Yes. Yi. Ko. Ku. Nafu. Kuuliza. 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 Yes. Kutia. Yes. Abiria. 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 Yes. Chai. Yes. Kuenda. Yes. Zambarau. Perfect. Kuondoa. Yes. Eusi. Yes. Halilia. Yes. Maendeleo. Yes. Kuzoea. Yes. Kuzuia. Perfect. A very good part for you, sister. So uh, I think this has been a wonderful session for us today. And this is how we'll be moving forward. All of you have actually excelled and passed it. I can test. So <laughs> you've passed the test for today. And I believe you've been also able to understand some few meanings of this word. Before I end up in the next two minutes, do, is there anybody who is having any concern in regards to this class for today? Any concern, any issue to you, you feel that you should raise before we end? 
I've got none. You are impressed with our mode of learning? Is that perfect? The way you are trying to move? Is it better? Yes, it is. It is and it's very understandable. Thank you. Uh, any other I concern have no again? Concern. I have no concern. I'm grateful just for everything. Thank you. Renome? Ashante. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Welcome, Karibu. So thank you very much, comrades, for this. The next week, of course, we'll be now moving to the consonants, as you can see there, and we'll be moving to that. And then from the consonant, we'll move to the next phase. So I want us to go slowly, actually, because uh, I don't want to force this. Even in a normal teaching, a class should take a minimum of 45 minutes for teaching. And as you're in teaching university, you are very actually complex, but normal class is 45 minutes. So I want to take it like that. So you feel most welcome and thank you for coming today. And I'll be put, I'll, I'll send to you directly in your inbox the vowels and this screenshot of what you've learned today so that you can keep more practice. So I'll send it directly to your inbox after this class. Then now keep on practicing it as we move ahead and try to even Google the meaning sometimes if you've forgotten any so that you keep on mastering them. Without much ado, I'll re end this class at this particular moment. And thank you all for turning out today. So may God bless you. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night.